Hapa Day Guam, I'm Adriana Kutira. You are tuning in to The Greater Good, and I today I am joined with Samantha Taitino. You are the executive director for, I'm going to mess it up, but I'm going to try really hard, Manelu? Yes, Manelu. Okay, there we go. And then we also, thank you, thank you, yeah, you can make sound with that one. <laughs> and then we also have uh, Timothy DeLeon Guerrero, and you are with OPIC, you are the uh, operations manager and artist, correct? Yes. So recently, you guys have teamed up and had this collaboration with GPO, and I know that there's this big, beautiful art mural that you've um, come together to um, essentially have kids do it, right? Yes. yes. So tell me a little bit about that. So I'll have so Sam have start Sam off with how what the whole, whole um, initiative is initiative about, and then I can lead you into all the art stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it actually started um, earlier this year. Uh, we received a grant from Kaha that allowed us to bring art workshops to the different um, to three different communities around the island. And um, one of the art workshops that we had was street art, and um, the opaque team was generous enough to kind of come over to the different sites and uh, teach the kids about uh, street art um, from the market markers to uh, spray painting and um, each community was able to do a small mural and then um, GPO actually kind of saw all of the different things that we had been doing and they reached out to us and wanted to do a large project with the kids and have them give them the opportunity to all come together so we brought the kids from the three different sites together to GPO to uh, paint the mural. It was so beautiful. I passed by and I messaged you and I was like, are you over here doing this? Is this your project? And I saw it and I was like, oh my God, it looks so great just seeing the kids out there doing it themselves. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Yeah, I, I mean, so where did you start? You said that they had seen some of the other work GPO had? Yes, so um, we had an art show in April and it kind of showcased all of the different artwork that um, was produced during the art workshop. So there was a street art, there was photography, and there was also spoken word. So um, GPO kind of saw everything on our Instagram, our Facebook, and then also uh, came to the art show to see the work. And that's kind of where they were inspired to let the kids do a, a bigger project together. And how many kids um, joined in on this project, this bigger one? Um, for the uh, big mural, we limited it to about 12 to 15 kids. So it, it was about 12 kids. About 12 kids, okay. And then, so tell me a little bit about what the mural is of. So the mural, what we did was uh, GPO basically asked for some local, I guess you can say local legends or like local influences. So if you see on the mural from left to right, it starts out with the sun and then with the, uh, the proa. And then moving on more to the right, it goes with the serena. And then, we, of course, we have the local Chamorro uh, man that's there. And then we put uh, the laddie stones on the hut, uh, with the hut, as well as uh, a coconut crab and a mangrove crab. And uh, some a carabao too as well. I love that. You know, I've only lived in the islands for almost two years, and I love that I know what you're talking about. Like Serena <laughs> Mermaid. Okay, I got it. I'm like, I know what you're talking about. But so you really highlighted the culture then. Yes, uh, that's exactly what um, GPO wanted to do. We went through about maybe three different revisions uh, before they finally got something that they were really that they were really happy about. So that's what we ended up putting on the wall. And what was it like to see the kids come together and want to take part of this, um, a positive activity? It's actually really it's actually good really because, good um, because um, generally, generally when, when in the beginning when we first went out to the communities, like some of the kids were very hesitant because we didn't really know them on that kind of level. So having them kind of be more open and become like, oh, Mr. Tim, hey, what's up? I'm just like, oh, you remember me. Like it's, it's, it, find, it kind of feels like really uplifting and it makes me just kind of want to do more. So I have to say, you know, whenever I, I'm not an artist when it comes to drawing or painting, but I one time did this um, one little workshop and I realized like, oh, everyone can kind of be an artist in a way. So a lot of people think that they're so hesitant, right, to start painting or doing things. But how do you almost want to encourage them that everyone can perform art? Well, I, I think art is in everything, so it doesn't really matter if it's on a pen or pencil. Like it can be in the kitchen as you're cooking. It can be, you know, just you. Um, Taking a picture, as simply as taking a picture, or writing down words, um, you know, about your feelings and stuff. So, basically, what we basically just did was we just kind of gave them uh, a little, like, a nudge towards it. It didn't matter what kind of um, level they were with on, uh, on their art. Like, all, just, all it just mattered is that you, you're able to do it, and we'll show you how to do it. And then it's totally going to be up to them if they want to pursue it and move further with it. But we just kind of gave them that, basically, that idea that it, you don't have to be good to start.
you just have to yeah yeah, you just have to start basically Mm -hmm. because like for me and a bunch of like you know the people at opaque we didn't really have that art niche in the beginning like we we were so into art but we didn't really start off as good artists Mm -hmm. it's just kind of the work that kind of happened like we just never quit and so we were able to do what we do be we're able to do what we're able to do now right exactly i mean yeah so how did you start um, now so, that I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> no, me the same way with writing, right? How did I become a journalist? Yeah, I was writing, yeah. and I still write. Not a lot of people know this, but like I write every single day, not even just for work, but personally. So it's like freedom of expression. That's art in itself, right? Yeah. So in general, the way how I got first introduced to the whole art thing was my older brother. Uh, he was uh, born born with the gift of art, so I would always be watching him draw, and then naturally, like you know, you mimic your older brother. You want to do what he does, and then he was always like downgrading me, like, oh, you stink, like you. you you're not gonna like you know it's it's not good like just stop but I just ended up growing a niche for graffiti because like I always wonder like how do they do that like always with the spray paint and then throughout the years it's been like oh, almost but going about 20 years now since I took it like very seriously and it just kind of the skills just kind of developed the more and more as I started to do it and then I ended up meeting Rome and Ed um, the other boys the other artists that'll pick and we kind of just taught each other throughout the years um, different techniques and different styles what works and all of that so so you kind of have a staple name too right when you do your graffiti yes I do yes okay. I do <laughs> everyone knows you by it yeah everyone yeah, calls me yeah, by it so yeah, uh, of course so is uh-huh. yeah or yeah. however else they want to say it so <laughs> interestingly enough I had interviewed him when I was working in Saipan for TSPN2 and it was um, via FaceTime because I saw the name the Soyuz at, yeah where was it was at one of the hotels it was at Aqua came, Resort yeah you yeah. came over and he was just like trying to help beautify the island with his art and I was like oh I'm totally gonna jump on this and interviewed you and I remember that story um, because they had put up the, the pool was closed and yes. yes tourists to still come and take photos so yeah. they were taking pictures yeah. in front of his artwork but yeah so how do you feel being able to um, provide that opportunity for people it's kind of weird in the very beginning because like in the beginning of the career I would never expect myself to be taking graffiti in this direction because it's always about like you know being a um, I don't know, like a rebel and all that, but I guess it kind of came to the point like where we were doing everything and then it was just the question of what are we going to do next and what are we going to do? There's only so many things that you can do, basically, but we haven't explored every avenue for graffiti and I guess with Sam coming in with this initiative, like it kind of gave us the opportunity to say like, we have to do it. There's no reason for us not to do it. We've been doing everything else. So like, what's like, why should we, like, why are we going to say no? So that was kind of like the... That's a, that's a really good point though. Cause you know, oftentimes graffiti, it's almost um, frowned upon, right? Yeah. And it took a lot of, like took a lot of work actually to change that stigma here on the island. Like with also going to two schools and showing people what you can actually do with it. And it doesn't have to stay that way. I mean, there there is always going to be that aspect Aspect of it, and that's never going to change. Being that that's what graffiti is, but there's also other avenues that you can basically journey down through to actually become successful, and then you know actually make a decent living off of it. Right. So Sam, I have a question for you. When you saw the uh, different kids participating in this. Did they say anything about how how they felt, or was there any words you could share? Yeah, so I mean, the kids really loved all of the art workshops, you know. It was really about kind of encouraging them to express themselves, giving them a different positive outlet to kind of, you know, express their feelings, show what they're feeling and everything, sorry. Um, And uh, they were just super excited, especially for the street art, for the graffiti, Mm -hmm. you know. um, We worked with middle school and high school kids, so they were super interested in getting their hands on the spray paint. But uh, what was great was that um, Tim and the rest of the team were like, this is something that you need to take seriously. You know, like, you need to respect this because it does have that bad, bad stigma. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, um, when we brought them out to GPO, um, it was just so nice to get them all together finally because um, we had kids coming from Jigo, we had kids coming from Jotnya, and we had kids coming from Totu. Oh, wow, so we all came together. Yeah, so we were able to bring them all together. They all got to meet each other and just kind of share in um making the mural what were the reactions when they saw the mural at the end because I could only imagine they'd be like well I did that I know I would be like that right (laughs) they were they were definitely excited but they were also very exhausted oh yeah Yeah, it's it's it was a mural that big is uh not people really understand like how brutal it is onto the body Especially when you're out there painting for five, six hours in the hot sun. sun. As a same yeah. sun. Yeah, so like it was like they have really got to experience like this is the kind of work that you're going to have to put in if this is something that you want to do in the future. 
did any of them say that they might want to pursue something like this in the future? I think they all winked they about all it. Like, yeah. I, I guess they're still at the stage where they're still, where they're still trying to figure it out, but I definitely do believe, do believe that, that there's going to be one out of them. Like, I, I know it. One of them is just going to be like, like come, come in. they're going to come in so big and be like, check out my black book, bro. Uh -huh. Check it out. <laughs> and you're not going to be like your brother, right? No, not at all. <laughs> It's really funny now because my brother's all like, man, I should have not stopped. I'm like, what now? Bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes it motivates you more, right? Uh, I, I hope Maybe. it motivates him, but I, I like it. So. Yeah. But you know, that's like siblings, having siblings. And essentially, that's what um, Manalu yeah, Manalu, tries to do, yeah. right? It's a whole big brothers, big sisters. Yes. Yes. So for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about the organization. Okay, so Manalu is formerly Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Guam. Uh, last year, we transitioned from that organization name to Manyetlu, and it was just really to localize the program. Mm -hmm. uh, Manyetlu in Chamorro means uh, brotherhood and sisterhood, so it just felt like an appropriate name. Um, so uh, we have the same one-to-one -one mentoring program that Big Brothers Big Sisters um, has, um, but we also do these different kinds of community outreach activities um, with partners. So we do um, after-school activities in different uh, low to moderate income housing areas um, and to include the art workshops and sports. So we're actually looking forward to starting up the art workshops again in January. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a whole other set of um, communities that we're going to be going to, a whole different group, set of kids. So I'm pretty excited for that because um, I think I'm going to be a better teacher now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I never thought I would ever have to teach kids graffiti, which is super kind of cool. So I'm kind of excited to bring more to the table now. Yeah, definitely. So what was it like teaching? Oh, man. <laughs> um, it was something... Patients come through? No, I think... <laughs> I think because like I know how it is just being the trying to be the student to learn uh, using a spray paint so I knew how excited how the excitement can go so I think I was very good um, very good with my patients but um, I think it came down to like I wanted them to realize more of what they were doing because um, um, at their age when we were doing it we didn't get this kind of opportunity so we actually had to work so hard to get it to where it's at now and you know some of us have had battles with the law with uh with all of this so well it was just more like you know like i just really wanted them to understand and respect respect the art form because there's like i said like you know you can go either good on the good side or the bad side and um i had to basically show them the bad side as well as well as the good because it's it's not going to be fair if they only see one side to it they gotta they gotta see both sides and then you know hopefully they choose the good side for it Oh, yeah. I, lo I love how you just said that. That's great. <laughs> I mean, that's what, you know, essentially we always try to do is show both sides when people can form their own decisions. Yeah, and for sure. We're all given sure. choices in life, so now they can um, decide which way they want to yeah. go. Yeah, like the big brother I'm supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So are there any other, um, you said that, what did you say, in January? Yeah, so we started in January and then we went to Jigo at uh, Summer Homes. So with there, we pasted about, um, I want to say six ply, ply board woods. Yeah. We were supposed to clean a, um, a wall there, but what ended up happening was that wall was getting... Um, building was being renovated. Big, yeah, it was being renovated. So we ended up uh, getting a bunch of boards and then uh, doing the letter, uh, doing the word, uh, saying uh, Island of Dreams. And then within those letters, we did different kind of f uh, fills. And uh, in the background, what we ended up doing was um, a floral a floral backdrop pattern with it. And then after summer homes, we ended up going up to Zonia. And in Zonia, we had this really big, long wall, which was so awesome because it was like, dude, the mayor's giving us that wall? No way. So it was like maybe about 200 feet. And then we wrapped, that, uh, wrapped it with a ocean blue um, background fill and then we wrapped it with a bunch of uh, hibiscus leaves uh, with banana and monstera leaves as well. How do you guys determine the different themes or what wall gets, which design? Oh, you know, you wake up in the day and you're like, I think I want to paint this. Really? No, 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 I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. So it, it, all, it all really de uh, determined on what size of the wall we got and, and basically the amount of time that we would have. And also the, the skill that the, the kids, we were able to bring the kids up to before the mural starts. So we had three weeks of all the kids and then um, so basically what ended up happening was each, each one had their own kind of style of learning because, you know, it was my first time. So I had to see which, what worked best and what the kids would actually 
take in a lot faster and easier and remember for the next week that we would come in. So with that, what ended up happening was we just chose an idea that would best fit the size of space that we had. Did they sketch out any of the ideas? No, we, we kind of, so we did kind of like a coloring book idea, okay. but then we had them go in on their own basically. Like we showed them the techniques of how to spray uh, and all of that, but then we left it up to them of how to do it. And then when they needed help or they weren't comfortable, we would come in and show them like, no, don't be like that. Like, see, it's just, it's that easy. Like, it's just like that. And it's like, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was basically totally up to them. And then we just cleaned it up a little bit, but majority like 80, 85% of all the work that was on the, on the walls that they did was all them. So as um, an artist, you know, oftentimes I'm sure that this has happened where it's like it ends up turning out into something you didn't even expect and almost as better than what you had like, an idea that, that happened that, often? Oh, that, like, is that like, like, is 90, that like 99% of all the paintings kind of end up that way? Uh -huh. um, because from what I've learned too, like you got to do what the wall kind of asks of you. There's so many different kind of battles that you have even just prior to painting the wall. Like you have to make sure that the, the wall is clean enough for you to paint. There's no water bubbles, you know, there's no mold because all of that kind of takes kind of takes a toll on the painting in the long run. So with all of that happening, like what ends up like some stuff end up having to be moved to as well. Like, you know, like the placements of some stuff that look good on the computer, but doesn't actually look good on the wall. So stuff has to change around. It's it's completely supposed to happen. Like it's kind of... It's already written for you. Yeah, kind of. You can say that. Yeah. I mean, like I mentioned, like I always... Um, so also another thing with um, art and just freedom of expression, it's also peace of mind, right? Yes, yeah. for sure. Did you see that within the kids? Did you see them almost, uh, you know, have that sense of peace of mind coming out there? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool too because like they're they're eager. They're like, what can we do next? Like there's even a moment in time when I'm trying to plan out the next steps for them and they're just waiting. I was like, you guys don't want to paint? It's like, no sir, we're actually just waiting for you to see what's next. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's but, it's yeah, pretty, pretty good. Like, pretty I, good. like I, I enjoyed the I fact that they were more than more eager than to actually pick up a can, pick up a can and just do it. Just like, do it. not not even like not to have a not worry to if have it's gonna be good or bad. Like, mm -hmm. to just go out and do it, which is really cool. What was it like to see that for you? Uh, it was great. Um, what was really nice is I kind of followed them through all of the art workshops. So, you know, I was there with them with the kids, kind of seeing them develop their skills and. Once we went to GPO, like, and they started to, to paint, you're, like, looking, you're, like, wow, like, they really picked up a lot of information, and like he said, a lot of times, like, you know, like, he's trying to, like, lay things out and prepare the next thing for them to paint, and they're, like, okay, sir, like, what can I do next? <laughs> and we're, like... Just, just hold on, because they were getting so fast at doing it. Yeah, so yeah, really, really yeah. Good. Especially with spray painting too. Like a lot of people really like don't realize how quickly you can get a painting done. So like with the GPO painting, we got it done in two days. Um, basically painting for five to six hours during the day. Yeah. That home, that home, yeah. Room. yeah. So, 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 like, even with me, like, I had to step back a little bit, and and I really forgot how quickly, like, you can move, especially when you have the, when you have the right techniques down, like, it, it just covers so easily, then you can move on to the next, and then to the next, and I I gotta plan myself better to just have everything laid out, so then, like, it can just go, cause I was kind of envisioning it that the kids would just like. I would have to reteach them re some techniques, some but techniques, that but that wasn't the case. Like they kind of all remembered how to lay the paint, how to lay the paint down. I was just like, oh, <laughs> my heart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and it was on a Saturday, so like all of these kids spent their Saturday, two Saturdays, out there with us. So they were just so excited to to kind of come back out to do it again, to do something that was so public that they'll be able to tell their friends like, hey, like. Did you go to GPO? Did you see the did mural? You see and you know, like, we did that. that. Yeah. It's always there. Yeah. yeah. Aww, I love that. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so whenever you started um, spray painting, did you ever think that you would be here today helping um, kids learn this? No, not at all. I always thought that I would just always want to paint bigger and more murals and just write my name on everything. <laughs> no, it, like it's a true story. Like that's like every graffiti artist's dream, right? That's every graffiti artist's dreams. But what ended up happening was with the when when Opaque opened up, right? It kind of became to the point like where you had to choose what direction to go, and of course, like you know, like there's always gonna be that demon in me that's always gonna want to go and write my name. 
but it just came down to the point like what am I going to be doing it for now like is it just is it just for me or is it just for other graffiti artists or am I going to give it give it back to the community that's giving me so much right now because like we get a lot of love from a lot of everyone on the island like you know they come in so opaque they they wear our clothing you know they they love what we're standing for so it really just came down to that to, to just really give it back to to the people and why not start with the kids and hopefully keep keep this kind of art form moving because I'm only going to be here for so long and Rome and Ed are only going to be here for so long so it's a, I think it's just about that time that we hit hit it to where we want to teach it to other people so we can keep it going as for as long as it can until uh, as long as we can when we're gone basically you feel a purpose with it yeah for sure definitely and then you know hopefully I can bring it to Saipan and the rest of the CNMI so hopefully so um, even though I'm pretty sure everyone does know but um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the brand okay so opaque um, it's a opaque Guam basically uh, we are an urban sh uh, street clothing brand as well as an art brand as well so we do more than just clothing uh, a lot of people do feel the vibes of the clothing being that we generate our art onto it and project mm -hmm. our art onto it so we rely a lot of um, of our energy through the art of graffiti and skateboarding as well. So if you come into the shop, that's basically the vibes that you're going to get. A lot of art vibes and a lot of skateboarding vibes. So we do a lot of clothing. We uh, a lot of clothing and a lot of um, how do you say it? street um, tools, I guess art uh, street art tools. So a lot of markers. Uh, of course, we carry spray paint as well. And then we also carry different variety brands of skateboards as well as uh, skateboard accessories. And then on the backhand side where I'm at, you know, we do a lot of t-shirt printing as well. So we cater to a lot of other brands on island and a lot of organizations and we print and do a lot of art for them as well. So what's your uh, mission? For, with Opaque? Yeah. I, I just spread uh, the vibes across the, across the world, I guess. So we just want to basically take our art and all our food and eat as much food as we can uh, everywhere around the world <laughs> and you know to everybody that just wants to take a piece of Guam with them wherever they go mm -hmm. so what made you guys want to um, collaborate with uh, Opaque well um, Opaque is just a kind of the it brand and like they I know I don't recognize that the it brand <laughs> and of course, you know, um, you see their murals all over the mm -hmm. island already. Yeah. And um, I know that they've done other things with other organizations before in the past that deal with the youth. So pretty much we just thought that they would be the perfect partners to kind of come out. You know, it's um, there are people that the kids can look up to, um, that the kids can respect. And they're also like generally really good role models and worked so well with all of the kids. So uh, it just... It made sense to partner with them when you're thinking about street art and graffiti um i don't know who else i would think of to partner with right yeah no, i gotta say ever since i moved to um guam one of my favorite things is all the murals all the art yeah. i'm like oh my god it's so beautiful like you just want to take a picture everywhere yeah. of the walls <laughs> not even just the ocean i want to take a picture of the walls everywhere so it is it's really beautiful it's a great effort um you know to beautify the islands and yeah, hopefully you guys, because, you know, in Saipan, they could use more of that, which is why when I saw it, when you were there, I was like, oh, my gosh, look at this. Look yeah, so at this bright color. <laughs> hopefully we can. Um, there's always, like, we are we are thinking about it and trying to make moves for it. But, um, yeah, that's definitely one of my goals is to bring that same kind of energy down there and then hopefully get more, because uh, more talented people that just don't have that opportunity to kind of get exposed or, like, to put their arts in public spaces, like, kind of get them out, too, as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe even just teach them. Yeah, that's that's cool, too. Right? that's cool too. That's cool too. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, um, are there any other upcoming events that you guys want to mention at all for either of the organizations or businesses? Um, just, well, just for as far as opaque happens, um, I guess we'll be doing more with Manielu uh, next year, January, February, and March as well. So if there's any, if you guys, have, there's anybody out there, I guess that's interested mm -hmm. in taking part, you don't really have to be a part of the village. You can be a village that's close to you. You can, uh, I guess, contact Sam, and then she can give you, they can give you all the details. And uh, as far as opaque, um. Black Friday and Christmas Friday. is coming up. <laughs> Fire drops, yo. Fire drops, Fire I'm just drops. saying. <laughs> so you guys will be doing some more artwork then, for sure. Yes, yeah. uh, definitely okay. for sure. I don't oh, think that's okay. ever going to stop, for uh, at least for a peak side. The art's uh -huh. never going to stop. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's great. So like you mentioned, we'll be starting up our Art in the Ville art workshops again next year. Um, so it will be street art, uh, spoken word, dance. That's a new one for this year. And then photography. Uh, we rotate to different um, communities uh, around the island. Um, and like you said, you don't have to be living in that community to come out. We encourage everyone to come out. I want to come out. Oh, girl, I got you. <laughs> and, then, and then also uh, the last thing that we have for, or the last big thing that we have for the year is our Breakfast with Santa, which will be on December 7th um, at the Outrigger. And it's just um, our annual fundraiser uh, to – and. It's a breakfast buffet. Uh, Santa will be there, and then just different activity stations. Um, there will be some sorts of arts. There will be like card making and cookie decorating. No graffiti this time around, but <laughs> it's okay. I'll be there in my pajamas though. Yeah, it's breakfast with Santa in your pajamas. Okay, in your pajamas. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. So we do have a few comments that I forgot to look at. Sorry, guys. But um, so we have Debbie Davis saying half a day, and she is saying this all the way from Kentucky. What's so up, Hoffa Hello. Hello. Yeah, she's watching yeah, over there. I think, there. I think she said the mural looks, looks beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have someone else watching from Washington State saying Hoffa Day, Charlotte. Oh my gosh, these last names get me. Gentleman. <laughs> How do I, Marcus, you pronounce that one? How so, Sonia? I always have people help me. That's know. a good one. <laughs> That's a good Hi, one. Thanks for <laughs> but yeah, so we have a lot of uh, people from the mainland that got to see the art too. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. All right, well, thank you guys for joining me on the podcast. Thanks thank for having you us. Thank you all for watching. I'm Adriana Cotero for The Greater Good.